This podcast is brought to you by my good friends at Churchill Mortgage, the only mortgage company I recommend. For great rates and outstanding customer service, visit churchillmortgage.com or call 855-LOAN-200. That's 855-562-6200. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Dave Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I am Dave Ramsey, your host. This is your show, America. You jump in. We'll talk about your life and your money. It's book tour week. And that means we have been all over America already, speaking and appearing in different shows. And we being Christy Wright and me, Christy is back in Nashville today. Today in Nashville is our Nashville book signing. We jump on a plane tonight and head to San Antonio. Been a busy week, Christy. It has been. It's been a fun week, though. This is awesome. The energy around the launch of this book is absolutely incredible. The books are flying out the door. We knew it, too. We knew in the pre-sale, we knew even in the years leading up to this, of this market is hot. They need help with their businesses. But I don't think we could have anticipated exactly how it was going to go this week. And so even for our team, which had high expectations, it's kind of blown those out of the water. Business Boutique, a woman's guide for making money, doing what she loves, uh, launched on Monday. The, the The event has been out there. The Business Boutique Academy is available. The Profit Potential app is at businessboutique.com. But the book now is here. And let me tell you, you, you know that when you uh, have a really good promotion, that enough people come to your servers, you can crash your servers. And we always laugh and say, hey, we broke the Internet, right? Everybody talks about that. Well, guess what? We broke Amazon. (laughs) Amazon's out of business boutique books. They ran out of books. And so they've got like a delayed delivery on their website. But never fear. We have books. <laughs> we have books. We did not run out of books. We have books. And so, uh, and, you know, if you want to get the book quicker, you can just jump on DaveRamsey.com and get the book, Business Boutique. You can find it at most stores, but we are hearing reports that some of the stores are not did not have enough stock. And so if you if you just have trouble, uh, I don't know who's got them, who doesn't. There's a lot. I mean, all the major stores picked them up, but some of them didn't pick up enough inventory. They did not believe us when we said this thing was going to be big. And so uh, a few of them have run out. So pretty simple. Just jump on DaveRamsey.com and get your book if you want to. I can't guarantee where else it is or isn't. It is all. It was all over the place Monday, but it's uh, been, been, as I said, flying off the shelves. And that's a great problem to have, except that some of you are tweeting, Dave, I can't find the book. Well, DaveRamsey.com. Shut up. It's there. It's there. <laughs> We've got them. Congratulations, Christy. Thanks. It's, it's been so much fun, and we're just success. getting started. Big success. And so we had a very busy day in New York on Monday. A bunch of media there. Uh, Fox, Fox Business, XM Radio Shows. Women's Day. Uh, Women's Day, Facebook Live, and, and did a podcast with Gene Chatsky that will right. air later. Uh, we jumped on the plane, flew to Atlanta. You did a bunch of media and a book signing in Atlanta. And, uh, of course, Anthony O'Neill and I had a wonderful uh, Smart Money event on Tuesday night, Wednesday yesterday wow uh you and i did the business boutique all day long actually you did it all day long i did an hour of it <laughs> but uh we we had an all-day event there in atlanta and flew back to nashville last night and then um of course today you've been doing media all over nashville for our signing tonight at the factory here outside of franklin and um that's going to be a special event not only is it a homecoming for you uh and then after that we fly off to san antonio we'll cover that in a few minutes but Talk about some of the fun things that are happening at the factory tonight. Yeah, we're so excited because this is our hometown, and I'm even from Nashville, and so we want it to be a big party. We're going to have donuts and cookies and cupcakes and coffee and all kinds of goodies there, but then we're doing a giveaway of $1,000 to a lucky winner. We're also doing a giveaway of a coaching session with me to help people get their business going, 
and we're doing、uh, gift bags for the first 100 people that come. And they've got some really fun stuff in these bags. And so we're excited. We want people to come and hang out, get their book signed. If they don't have a copy, they can pick one up there as well. And we just want to celebrate the success that, that this book has become already. And there's a, a lot of lady owned businesses have contributed、uh, things to this gift bag. Right. And、uh, Grace and Lace. And、uh, of course, Five Daughters Bakery has got the donuts there. I've been hearing about these donuts. I got, everybody talks about them all over <laughs> Nashville. I've got to check them out. And、uh, Honest Coffee Roasters will have some coffee there. And Sparkle,、uh, and The Sparkle Hustle Grow has got some of the items in there, and there's going to you know, all kinds of goodies in these bags. This, this is not one little thing. It's not like, you know, I, you run, I run, we go to these things, you get those bags at the end. Oh, the, it's not the, junk. It's that's not, right. That's junk when you sign up to run. It's、right. a bunch of crap. You go back to your room and you throw everything away except one item or something.、Right. No, this is every item in here is valuable. It's, it's great stuff, and it's from mostly our women owned businesses, small businesses, local businesses. We want to celebrate and champion what they're doing. That's what the business Boutique is all about, and so it's fun to have their products and their businesses highlighted there to get to champion them in the process. Business Boutique, a woman's guide for making money doing what she loves. And we'll be, she'll be signing books tonight at the factory at 6 p.m. A $1,000 cash prize. No purchase necessary, must be present to win. So be coming out for that and also a free coaching session. The first 100 people in line will get a gift bag full of these goodies that we're talking about. So don't miss out on that. We finish that up. We will jump on the plane, fly to San Antonio because tomorrow is. Business Boutique One Day. It's our last one of the spring, but this is a special one because we are streaming it. And so this is exciting where people can watch online. I don't know if we've told that yet or not. Oh, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> There's our announcement. <laughs> I think we just announced it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah.、We're, is it Facebook? Is that what、it's、we're doing? It's on Facebook and on YouTube, on、yeah. your YouTube channel. And so it's just going to be great where people totally for free can tune in and watch the Business Boutique One Day event in San Antonio. Yeah, I think the first couple of hours will be on the Facebook stream and the、right. whole thing will be on the YouTube stream. That's right. And it's completely free. And so if you want to watch.、Uh, The, the Business Boutique one day event tomorrow. If you're in San Antonio, there's about 1,400 tickets or so, which means there's about somewhere around 100 left. It's a 2,000 person or 1,500 person sellout. So、uh, you'll still be able to get a ticket if you want to come. We'd love to have you probably even walk up and get in. It's going to be probably can get you in. But jump online at DaveRamsey.com, get your tickets for that event tomorrow. Live streamed, though, for free. If you've been wanting to know more about this stuff, jump on Facebook. Now, is that your Facebook page? My Facebook page. So, c h r i s t i n your YouTube channel. My YouTube channel. So, go to Dave Ramsey's, the Dave Ramsey Show YouTube channel. And、uh, those of you that are used to watching this show happen on YouTube, you're going to get Business Boutique tomorrow. Surprise. Yay. <laughs> And,、uh, and it's a great event. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's a fabulous event. So,、um, <clears throat> And then your page is Christy Wright. Is Facebook Official Christy, Christy Wright. Wright. Official. Official Christy Wright. And that's Christy W R I G H T. Official Christy Wright is the site. And,、um, or I guess we'll probably have a banner up to click through at businessboutique.com. Yes. To make sure. sure people know it's there and so forth. So、uh, make plans to watch that tomorrow. If you've been wondering about this whole movement of ladies that are starting businesses, there's an economic force that is being unleashed here. And I'll tell you, being on the road with Christy, I'm getting to talk to a lot of these ladies. Power.、Mm-hmm. Man, there's so much good going to come out of this movement. So much economic good. So many households are going to be changed. There's so many cool new products and services coming to the marketplace. So we'll tell you more. We'll also answer your questions. If you're a lady and you want to call in in the next segment, you have a business question, we'll give you a business boutique book. We're going to celebrate this week. That's awesome. We've actually got some. Yes. So we want to give some away.、Uh, Amazon doesn't got them, but we got them. <laughs> but we've、them. got them. There you、them. go. <laughs> This is the Dave Ramsey Show.
I'm joined today by my daughter, Rachel Cruz, for the Churchill Mortgage Question of the Day. Jessica's afraid to take the leap into home ownership. She has a great job and plenty of money and savings. She wants to know what she should do, rent or buy. Well, Jessica, the fact is buying a home sets you up for building wealth. You're always better off to buy a home if it's a reasonable expense in your budget. Call Churchill Mortgage today, 855-LOAN-200, or go to churchillmortgage.com. This is a paid advertisement. NMLS ID 1591, Equal Housing Lender, 761 Old Hickory Boulevard, Brentwood, Tennessee, 37027. Christy Wright joins us with Business Boutique, a woman's guide for making money doing what she loves. And the book launched on Monday. And we are celebrating launch day. Today is the book signing in Nashville at 6 o'clock at the factory in Franklin. And this is not your traditional book signing. This will be like a party. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And tomorrow, Business Boutique One Day event all day. Uh, And if you're in San Antonio, we would love to have you come get your tickets at DaveRamsey.com. If you want to watch it, the first little bit of it, an hour or two, will be on Facebook at Christie's, at Official Christie Wright on Facebook, and a live stream. And we're going to live stream the whole thing on YouTube at the Dave Ramsey Show channel. And uh, by the way, if you don't know, we do all kinds of special stuff on that YouTube channel, and you can subscribe to that channel real easily, the Dave Ramsey Show channel, and subscribe. What that means is they just send you an email when something's happening, and you can go, oh, there it is. I can do this. You ready to take some questions? Let's do it. All right. Stephanie is with us in Des Moines, Iowa. Hi, Stephanie. How are you? Hi. Good. How are you guys? Great. Great. Your question for Christy. I'm- well, I'm so excited to be talking to you. I started my book, um, reading it, and bought it for a bunch of friends. Um, I have a custom home decor business. I started about two years ago. Last year, I sold about 8500 I'm wanting to grow this into a possibly full-time business. Um, I have an Etsy. I do a lot of advertising locally on swaps and different things. Um, I also have a Facebook where I do ads. But I am really struggling with how to go from advertising just locally to my friends, family, kind of people in my reach, to reaching everyone. I feel like I've kind of tapped my local market a little bit with all the swaps and stuff. And I live in a smaller city, so I'm really wanting to reach out. How do I go about making that switch? You know, that's a great question. I'll tell you, one of the things that you might be able to do is activate and leverage your current client base. Because as you know, we women love to talk, we love to share, and we really live in a, a world where there's word of mouth marketing is very, very powerful. So I wonder if yeah. you have a client base, you can actually incentivize referrals. So you can say, you know, get 10% off your next order if you refer a friend that gives me your name. Or okay. uh, get a coupon next time if you uh, tag some friends on Facebook or share a picture. For example, I'm seeing people share pictures of their business boutique book right now, and I'm continuing Continually encouraging that to happen. And we're going to do a giveaway next month, in fact, when people share uh, things using the hashtag business boutique. So well, that's one way that you can start to activate your tribe. When that- you're doing that, also do it as an announcement that, you know, we were local, now we're going national. Mm, that's good, yeah. And so, uh, okay. uh, so w- you know, what you're saying is, if you didn't know, I'm not just in this town. I'm delivering all over the United States now. And so if you've yeah. got a friend in California, if you've got a friend in Florida, and kind of expand their minds because they may see you as local, and you probably need to get in their face and tell them you're not. Okay. Yeah, that's really good. Okay. Well, thank you so much. That answers my question, and I will continue to advertise and do that. Well, Great thank you. Well, thanks, Stephanie. <laughs> Hang on. We're going to give you another copy of Business Boutique. Sound like you've got several, but we're going to help you uh, keep spreading the word. And uh, thank you for doing that, for spreading the word. Marie is with us in Peoria, Illinois. Wait a minute. That's not right. I did that wrong completely. There it is. Marie is in Peoria, Illinois. Hi, Marie. How are you? Good. Doing good. Good. Your question for Christy. Um, yes, I have a home daycare, um, watching kids, and then I have a crafting business where I create things. I am uh, wondering, if, I'm not getting as much income from the crafting business as I do from home daycare, and I'm wondering how much I should put towards the crafting business. You mean in terms of time? Yeah, more more in time, and then um, I scaled back doing as many craft shows just because if it doesn't bring in over a certain amount, I don't feel it's worth my time. Sure. So... 
Well, I'm trying to figure out the balance. <laughs> absolutely. Well, one of the things that I teach in the book is to set goals for your business. And when you set goals, then it helps you identify what your version of success is, what your finish line that you're running towards is. And then you back out of that and you identify how much time you need to work on your business in order to reach that goal. So I'll give you a real practical example from my life. Last year, I had a goal to write a book and that was a certain okay. amount of words that I had to deliver in a manuscript. And I knew how long mm-hmm. it took me to write you know, a thousand words, for example, and I could back out of that and say, okay, I have to work on the book at least 12 hours a week for just the first draft. So your goals can help inform the amount of time you're going to work on it. But to your point, you need to make sure that your working hours are actually giving you ROI. So if something is not giving you a return on your investment, don't spend time there, figure out what is giving you a return and spend more time doing those things. So also I would add to that, that, you know, part of your goals is you're, you say, in order for me to go to this craft show, I have to sell X number of dollars. That's also right. a type of goal. Um, and, okay. and then the question we always ask ourselves around here, when we have a date or a dollar that we're aiming at, either one, a date is the delivery on the book, a dollar amount is you want to make X number of dollars at each craft show, minimum, and all right. of those kinds of things, then um, you ask yourself this question, what has to be true for me to be able to do okay. that? What has to be true okay. for me to deliver the book on this date? What has to be true for me to make 1500 at every craft show or whatever your number is? And if you ask yourself what has to be true, then you go, well, I'd have to do this and I'd have to do that and I'd have to do this. And then you go, I don't want to do that. Right. It's not <laughs> worth it. Right. Or you go, okay, that, yeah, that's what I wasn't doing. That's why I wasn't getting the results. And so if I'm going to go, I got to do these three things in order to make it worth my while. Right. And then it'll hit the number. What has to be true in order for me to hit that number? And um, what have I got to do differently if I'm not hitting that number, in other words, to to cause that to happen? What has to be true for me to lose 30 pounds? What has to be true for me to run a marathon? What has to be true? You can ask yourself these questions, and then it it's all, all comes back to steps and training and processes and things you got to do differently than you've been doing so far in order to get a different result. Such it'll a great lead, question. Great question to ask yourself. It'll lead you right into stuff. Uh, all right. Becky is with – oh, hang on there, Ann. We're going to give you a copy of uh, Christie's book, Business Boutique. Becky also getting a copy from Wichita, Kansas. Hi, Becky. Your question for Christy. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for taking my call today. Sure. Um, so this is kind of serendipitous timing. Dave, we started listening to you a couple years ago and kind of fell off the bandwagon and got back in. And then all of a sudden, here's this Christy Wright person with all this wonderful business advice <laughs> on top of Dave Ramsey advice. So it's been really cool for us. Um, I'm in business uh, as a technical virtual assistant. I help build websites and do um, and do email marketing, that kind of thing. And uh, I've been in business for about three and a half years now, and things are going well. Um, but I'm kind of at a point where I know a lot more than I did a couple years back. And the raising the rate question is definitely coming up. And what I've been doing is as I get new clients, I raise the rate. Um, but I'm kind of running into a thing where I've still got a couple people that I work with pretty consistently and I'm still charging them my old rates. Um, and it's, it's an hourly rate, and I'm more of a package, in a package situation now. So I'm wondering what advice you guys might have for keeping those relationships. There's definitely, like, some money fears there. I don't want to lose what I've already got guaranteed. Um, but, again, it's, it's taking a risk. And, you know, so I was just wanting to see what kind of advice you guys might have for that. Sure, that's a great question. Becky, I'll tell you, in my own life, you know, you have an expectation as a consumer. I have an expectation as a consumer that rates go up typically every year or during season, whatever. So I have a a woman that does my hair and I'm very loyal Mm -hmm. to her. She does a great job and I've been with her for years. And every so often, maybe it's annually, I haven't paid attention to her pattern, but I'll get a notification. Hey, my rates are going up on this date. And usually that date is a month or two in advance. So I get a heads up, you know, as her client and here's Mm -hmm. the new rates and we're excited to serve you, you know, at these new rates at this time. And it just gives me notice and I expect it. And consumers expect prices to go up over time as, as the price of everything goes up over time. So I think it's realistic for you to raise your prices, but I would just, the only piece of advice I would give you there is just give your customers a heads up. That's just a way to honor them and give them notice and let them know you want to continue to serve them. But as your business grows, these are the new rates and, and you, you're you the business owner. And so I know that may be mm-hmm. scary, but you have the right to charge what you're worth and you're worth more now than you were three years ago. And built, right, into, right. built into the attitude that Chris is using is what we would in sales call an assumptive close. You're not asking them if it's okay. You're not asking permission. You're just exactly. making an announcement. Right. It's your business. Got it. Okay. It's a pronouncement. It's just like, this is what we're doing, and 
And uh, thank you for all the years of business. But I want to give you a heads up. You're a great customer. We, you know, this is what we're doing. Yeah. And don't 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 act like there's ever going to be a problem. If you act like there's, there's something to be sorry for, people think you've got something to be sorry for. Yeah. You don't. And it's not, you know, don't enter it apologetically. Enter it with boldness. That's good. Christy Wright, I'm proud of you. Thank you. Big Fun book week. signing tonight. Yes. I will see you over there in a few minutes. Yes. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Over the years, I've seen so many families suffer by not having life insurance. It's not that they didn't care. It's just that they didn't know. So they did nothing. That's a huge mistake. Listen, term life insurance is the only way to go. It's not complicated. And it's not expensive. Please go to xanderinsurance.com or call 800-356-4282 and get the info you need to take care of your family. Trust me, taking these simple steps will let your family know how much you care. 800-356-4282. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions, Joe and Ramona are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Good. Hi. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Where are y'all from? We're from Canton, Michigan, right outside of Detroit. Fun. And all the way to Nashville to do a debt-free screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how much have you paid off? We paid off $194,000 in 58 months. Wow. The whole time, cash flowing a wedding. A college education for one of our kids and a mission trip for 18 months. Wow. Amazing. And your range of income during that time? Bounced around quite a bit. Uh, and that's part of what got us into this. We started out at about $80,000. And I was laid off from two jobs within four months of each other and ended up working at minimum wage at a startup company. Wow. Um, it, toward the end, we're doing really well. We're both working different jobs. And Together, we're making about 150. Okay, excellent. What do you all do now? I'm a dietitian. Mm-hmm. And I'm an engineer. Okay, excellent. So what kind of debt was the $194,000? About 8000 of it was a simple used van, and the rest of it was the house. You paid off your house? The house and everything. Yes. I'm looking at weird people. <laughs> yes. I love it. Well, congratulations, you two. How's it feel to not have a house payment? Free. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. And you got a wedding paid for, and you cash flowed some college. So, hey, man, you're killing it. This and, is awesome. And another wedding in September. Very cool. So what happened five years ago that put you guys on this journey? The getting laid off twice in a row. Mm-hmm. That, that's really important. We sat down and started uh, mapping out, you know, where's our money? How much have we got? How can we survive? Mm-hmm. And what have we got coming in the future? And that just scared us. You know, we're looking at with six kids. We're, our food bill alone will kill most families. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but we're looking at possible missions. We're looking at weddings. We're looking at colleges. Mm-hmm. And there's just no way we can afford to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had to really buckle down and, and figure out what we, how we were going to do it. And we said, this house payment has just got to go. Mm-hmm. That's just the only option. This thing has got to go. Mm-hmm. Um, we said, as we're figuring this out, we figured we had paid a little under 15000 on the house in the five years that we had been in it at the time. But we had paid the bank $66,000. What kind of a stupid person does that? (laughs) Well, us. (laughs) Fun. So you got connected with us five years ago or what? Yep. Uh, One of the jobs was we were flying into Nashville for work about an hour outside of Nashville. Mm -hmm. And on the road between Nashville and the factory, um, you know, had time to listen to the radio. And you can't go to Nashville and not find out about Dave Ramsey. Ah, okay. And that's where we figured out who Dave Ramsey was and what this was all about and decided that's, that's something we've got to do in our lives. Okay. So that, that gave you the plan then to execute, to get rid of the house payment and everything yeah. else. Cool. So, Ramona, what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? I mean, you paid off your house. Keep at it. Um, every month something will come up that you want to um, buy instead of the extra house payment, mm-hmm. and you just have to keep at it and say this is important and we want to pay this off how old are you two i'm 53 and i'm 55 awesome mm-hmm. very cool and you ever paid for a house we yep. paid for a house did y'all know your house was paid for 
Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty cool. Well done, you two. So, part of the keeping on track, by the way, and because for a lot of people, you have to pay off little debts and you have little celebrations. Mm-hmm. For us, you know, the van was one check. Yeah. And then the whole rest of the project was this big, monstrous behemoth. Mm-hmm. And being a nerd the way I am, actually created an amortization table, and mm-hmm. we put it on the bathroom door, and every time we paid an extra payment, we got to draw a little line and cross off payments. You know, for 100 bucks, we could get rid of a whole house payment. Mm-hmm. And, and, boy, it was just beautiful to see uh, some progress at getting closer to the end. Yeah. And, boy, that's what a nerd does. And we realized as we're doing this, are you ready for this? Keep your seatbelt buckled, folks. We avoided paying the bank $195,844. Wow. By paying it off early. By paying it off early. Wow. That, that That's looks huge. a lot like money that we can decide that we want to spend on more mission trips. Yeah. Or we want to spend on retirement or something awesome. Yeah, 200000 bucks gives you options. Yes. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Well done, you guys. Very well done. Very well done. Very proud of you. We've got a copy of Chris Hogan's book for you, Retire Inspired. Awesome. want that to be the next chapter in your story as you become millionaires and outrageously generous in the process. Yeah. So uh, way to go, you guys. Very proud of you. Thank you. How's it feel? Feels free. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just Feels to good. not have that big mm-hmm. burden on my shoulders all the time. You don't have a house payment. We don't have a house payment. I love it. And if That's... we lose our jobs, we won't lose our house. Hey, that's right. You got the house forever. There's a sense of security out of this. It's yeah. very real. It's very freeing. Well, congratulations, you guys. All right, Joe and Ramona. And hey. two kids. Oh, wait a minute. We got the kids with you. I'm sorry. With the we kids' names two and of ages? The six. Hey. Two of the six. This is Joey and Grace. All right. Very cool. And Joey and Grace from Detroit, Michigan. $194,000 paid off in 58 months. That's their house and everything. 80000 to zero to 150000 income. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're, We're debt-free! debt-free! <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Well done. Well done, well done. Man, that's how you get her done right there. That's seriously fun. Seriously fun. Well, open phones this hour. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. At the first segment or two of the show today, we told you that we will be uh, leaving here after the book signing for Christy Wright tonight, and we will be heading to San Antonio for the Business Boutique One Day event tomorrow. The Smart Conference is all day on Saturday, and it is sold out. And the Smart Conference for next Saturday all day in Phoenix is sold out. Thank you, guys. We really appreciate it. Uh, you can still get tickets, and you can watch online the uh, online streaming for the Business Boutique One Day event tomorrow. And because we're in San Antonio, all of us, to do the Smart Conference on Saturday, Rachel Cruz will be doing a book signing there in San Antonio. Barnes & Noble on La, La Quintera Parkway, 6 p.m. Friday night, tomorrow night, Friday night, Barnes & Noble, La Cantera Parkway, 6 p.m. Rachel Cruz will be there signing books. Now, of course, her uh, Love Your Life, Not Theirs, number one bestseller, will be there. The Smart Money, Smart Kids book that she wrote with me, number one bestseller, will be there. And the brand-new Graduate Survival Guide that she wrote with Anthony O'Neill will be there. So uh, any mix of those three books or any one of those three books, and Rachel will be happy to sign 6 p.m., Barnes & Noble on La Quintera Parkway uh, tomorrow night, Friday, April the 21st in San Antonio, Rachel Cruz. So make plans to go out for that book signing. And then Christy Wright will be signing books, of course, at Business Boutique event and at the Smart Money event. So we're everywhere, guys. We are running around all over the place. And, of course, then uh, once we finish up in San Antonio, Christy will continue her book tour uh, with Austin, Texas on Monday, Houston, Texas on Tuesday, Dallas on Wednesday, Colorado Springs on Thursday, and then over to Phoenix, Arizona on Friday, where we will do the one week from tomorrow, or one week from this Saturday, we will do the uh, Smart Conference there in Phoenix, the sold-out Smart Conference, and then she'll head on over to Los Angeles. So to find out more about her book tour, check it out at 
uh, at businessboutique.com. You can find out what's going on there. You can always find out everything at DaveRamsey.com. And so uh, a reminder, this uh, Graduate Survival Guide is the other book that we launched this month. And uh, we didn't really launch it. We just put it up for sale. And it is selling like great. It's an awesome book. Anthony O'Neill just did an incredible job on it, along with Rachel Cruz. It's got a DVD of them teaching in the back of it for your uh, graduating high school seniors. The five mistakes you can't afford to make in college. The Graduate Survival Guide. Great, great gift book. A lot of stuff going on around here right now, folks. We are just in excitement mode, and uh, we're trying to keep you informed of all of it so that you don't miss out, because all of a sudden, down in the summer, it's going to get quiet. We want to make sure while all the stuff's happening in April and May that you guys know where we are and how you can hook up to us because we're running around like our tails on fire. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. in Minneapolis. Hi, Ann. Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. Thanks for having me on. I'm so excited to talk to you. You too. How can I help? Um, so I have a question. We have three kids, and um, we're through the first three baby steps, and um, we're looking at possibly starting um, private school in the next one to two years, but um, we're kind of wondering where to prioritize our money right now, if we should prioritize it toward paying off our house, or if we should prioritize it more towards starting college funds, because we haven't started that yet. Uh, We recommend that after you are debt-free and you have your emergency fund in place, that you move to what we call baby step four, and that's 15% of your income going into retirement, five is kids' college, and six is paying off your home. And that's the order by which you get at it. But you should be able to do something on all three while you're doing that. I mean, 15% does not take up your whole budget of your income mm-hmm. going into retirement. That's why we limit it to that. We say don't do 25%, don't do 32%, do only 15%. And that should give you some room in your budget to do something towards college. And then if you have anything else you can squeeze out, throw it towards the house. How old are the kids? Um, our oldest is um, eight and a half, and the youngest is three, four. Okay. And what's your household income? Um, it's 95000 gross. Okay. And private school, by that you mean uh, their high school? Uh, well, m- when our oldest gets to, like, sixth grade, we were thinking. Okay. And what is your motivation for private school? Well, Academic, safety, or religion? Some of each. Okay. So the, sa- the schools um, where you are are not safe? Too. The schools where you are are not safe? Yeah. There's... There's some of that and some of just the Minnesota, um, with some of the laws that have been passed recently, I, it's... That's more about I about your so. value system. That's more about religion. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, like I said... I'm some, talking about physical safety. Um, for the most part, it's safe, like okay. physically. All right. So that's really not the issue. It's more about your values, uh, your faith, and so forth, don't align with Mm -hmm. some of the political trends that are out there. I can relate to that. And uh, uh, then on top of that, uh, you know, academics is is another piece of the element. Okay. So what you've got to do there, then, is is you need to think um, it's easy on both of those things. And this this is the biggest oxymoron in the world. But it's easy on both of those things to think illogically. That's weird mm-hmm. when you say that about education. But people get so emotional about those things that they will put an, a number out of their $95,000 budget. All of a sudden, they're spending $30,000 on kids' education. You can't afford that. Right. That's not an option. And so you have to use some common sense in this while you're dealing with the issues of value system and while you're dealing with the issues of academics. And uh, I'm not saying you shouldn't do private schools. I'm saying if you are going to do private schools, you have to think about what you really can pay, and that's going to dictate. You don't get to just go, oh, well, it's my kids. I'll do whatever. And people just lose their minds. 
And I, 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 I honestly, in 30 years of coaching, I've met a lot of people that because they did not think, oh, oh, they thought, well, whatever it takes to take care of my kid, uh, whatever it takes, I'll do anything. They bankrupt themselves, literally. They're in my office in bankruptcy over stupid private school. And I am not against a private school education. Uh, there is nothing wrong with it at all. Um, and in some cases, I, I, I would thoroughly endorse it, depending on what you're, what you're looking at, what you're facing as obstacles in the public school setting. Uh, but um, but the, I can tell you from an academic perspective, there's very little proof that a high-quality public school education won't get them through college. Uh, as a matter of fact, all three of my children and my wife and I were all products of the public school system and graduated in four years and uh, one of my kids graduated uh, magna cum laude so i mean it, it's entirely possible academically to go through college uh, and do well you know without a private school background but you've got to have a quality public school situation which we did have in, in all cases uh, that i'm mentioning there so you don't if you don't have that then you've got to think about do we move or can what what level of private school investment can we reasonably afford while accomplishing some of these other goals for the kids, like sending them to college? And uh, I just I meet people that go broke on private education for high school, and they don't have the money because of that to send their kid to college, and so it becomes um, irrelevant at that point. And so you just don't want to go out that direction. Good question. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate the discussion. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Sharon is with us in San Antonio. Hi, Sharon. How are you? Doing good. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. What's up? Well, I'm calling. You're going to have to hold your phone still. Oh, You're making okay. all Sorry kinds of that. noise with your phone. Okay. What are you doing? Is this better? No? I was moving to a place where you could hear. Is this better? Okay, there we go. Right, we'll try that. Okay. Um, I wanted to find out what I needed to do to get a real estate license. What you need to go do to get a real estate license. Well, real estate right, license uh, varies. The requirements for license varies from state to state. And I don't know what it is in Texas. In most markets, and I would assume Texas is the same thing, you have pre-licensing requirements where you have to take a class pre-licensing and get so many pre-licensing education uh, units then you take the test and pass it uh, at some point in the process you become an affiliate broker and you would have had to found a broker a company that would agree to let you place your license there and uh, let you put it down you know put it with someone so you have to have somebody to hire you you have to take the education to get the test, and then once you pass the test in most states, there are continuing education requirements that every two years or so you have to take another few hours of uh, continuing education. Now, that's most states. I'm not positive what the guidelines are in Texas, but I suspect they're pretty similar, um, and it'd be pretty simple to jump online and figure out exactly what Texas does require. So what, what's, well, drawing what you, what's, what's drawing you? I'm sorry? That's what I found out, exactly what you said, but there are classes online, and I didn't know if some of them were scams or if they're really legit. Well, I guess it's possible some of them are scams, uh, but a lot of classes are, of that type, are requirement classes, are done online these days. So uh, I would suspect some of them are very real, um, and... Uh, uh, you know, you're just going to have to shop around a little bit and figure out which ones do work and which ones don't work. And, and um, you know, you might talk to a few real estate brokers asking them, you know, which classes they would suggest if they were to hire you and see if you can figure out uh, somebody that's going to take your license once you, you know, let you place your license there once you um, – do get through the requirements and pa actually pass the test. And they, they can probably advise you on who, you know, the people joining our firm always take this class, in other words, and that kind of a thing. Um, but, yeah, you just got to figure that out and get in there and figure out which ones are scams. It's possible that space is not full of scam artists, though. It's not a big, scammy, scummy space. Most of that stuff's pretty straight up. But, again, 
just check it out and get somebody in the business that can tell you who to use, and they will know if there's somebody out there that's substandard on things. Because on your pre-licensing process, one of the things you want to do is take uh, un- take a class that will teach you how to pass the test. Uh, they'll know what's on the test and how to prepare for it properly. And you increase your probability of passing the test at the first setting if you take a class with a with a, uh, a curriculum provider that's dialed into the Texas system real strong. And so that that's what you want to do is, is figure that thing out. And, again, that varies much. It varies from state to state a lot. I took my real estate license in 1978. There were no pre-licensing requirements, no post-licensing requirements. How's that? I took the test in 27 minutes, made a 94. That's how easy it was to get a real estate license in 1978. It is not that easy now, I'll just tell you. (laughs) It wasn't that I was that smart. It was that easy. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Hey guys, it's James Childs, producer of The Dave Ramsey Show. In this hour, the show is over, but we have big news. You can now find us on Sirius XM. For channel information and times, go to DaveRamsey.com slash show. Hey guys, this is Dave Ramsey reminding you to catch The Dave Ramsey Show live on our YouTube channel weekdays. 